Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here and I am the Audiophiliac. Today I want to talk about recordings you can use to evaluate equipment, you know, speakers and amplifiers and digital converters and that sort of thing. Now, you know, you can use any music to evaluate a, a component um, and you should definitely use music that you're familiar with and really, really like, definitely. But you should also use recordings that sound exceptionally good and are exceptionally for lack of a better word, accurate. That is, recordings that haven't been compressed and haven't been EQ'd and haven't been processed and haven't been overdubbed and tweaked and stuff. Because those recordings can be interesting musically, but in terms of knowing what a speaker or an amplifier, or et cetera, sounds like without getting that other stuff in the way, I think can be hugely helpful. So, I think we sh I'll start with audio file recordings. And audio file recordings, as I've just described, well, the labels are um, AIX, uh, which makes kind of rock, uh, blues, a little bit of world music, a little bit of everything, really, really good recordings. 2L is uh, it's more classically oriented, stunning recordings, really, really, really exceptional. Uh, reference recordings is an old American label it's been around I think since the 70s um, and all of those or nearly all of those have been recorded by Keith Keith Johnson and he is staggering I mean his his work is consistently good consistently mind-blowing how it's just giving it to you it's like an ear witness account of what went down at the session which is sort of true for all audio file recordings they're just capturing a performance they're not assembling one from bits and pieces in a, in a mix um, then there's MA recordings which is uh, run by a friend of mine Todd Garfinkel who is the recording engineer and the mastering engineer and he takes the pictures a lot of the time and he, he basically does world music but there's some jazz in there and very very interesting stuff and sounds exceptionally exceptionally good I actually I'd say Todd takes takes the prize. I think he, more than anybody else, makes consistently stunning recordings. Then there is uh, Water Lily, run by Cavi Alexander, who's not terribly active now, but that you can find his stuff used on various sites. He did LPs and CDs. Um, also, more world music. His most famous recording is A Meeting by the River by Ry Cooter, guitarist, and it's exceptionally, exceptionally good. Can't can't go wrong with that one. Easy to easy to find. Um, some of these things are also on uh, streaming services like Tidal and Spotify. Um, then there's Maple Shade, which is basically a jazz label, um, and some blues in there. But again, really really good uh, stuff. Then uh, last but not least, there's Chesky Records, a label which I've had a long association with and I've worked on many of the records from the 80s and 90s, 80s, no, 90s, and early 2000s. Um, I no longer do work for Chesky, but in the interest of full disclosure, I have a long friendship with David Chesky. And again, exceptionally good and they do, well, Classical, they have done more, mostly jazz. I think you could categorize it as that, but there is some uh, rock or rock-ish recordings in there, folky things, a little bit of blues. It's a little bit of everything. Again, look around the, the Chesky website. Um, most of this stuff that I've talked about, most of these labels have some things, some offerings on streaming services like Spotify and Tidal. Um, and uh, if you want to know what a speaker sounds like as opposed to what the mix sounds like, I think uh, any of these audio file recordings that I just referred to would be phenomenal. Uh, you should own at least one or two of these and use them as a check, basically. Like, how transparent is this speaker, cable, amplifier, whatever? Well, you can't know how transparent something is if it's been processed to hell. So you can't. And, and uh, by the way, I don't think Steely Dan or Pink Floyd count as audio file recordings. They may be perfectly nice recordings, but they're not audiophile because they're very processed. All of those are. Now, the other hand is you should use music that you like, that you're extremely familiar with, that you judge to be good recordings, and, and put that into the mix part, the expression of how to evaluate a speaker, an amplifier, cable, whatever it is. 
because playing music that you know really well and hearing new things in it and subtleties and all kinds of stuff that's in there that may have gone unnoticed before which are now revealed by this thing that you're evaluating is again really really helpful so it's a mix it's a mix of audio recordings and then the stuff that you know really really well and really enjoy and I think when you do that when you're all done you'll have a good fix on what this thing sounds like and is it good is it bad how different is it that's that's always the question you know um, difference is is easy which one is better is is a little tougher uh, that is it for today my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am most definitely the audiophiliac this is the audiophiliac daily show and it comes up pretty much daily come back tomorrow see that see another one tell your friends share it and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like this sort of thing see you next time bye bye